right there on top of the moon. We could sit and do nothing. I wish we were both to just fly. Hey guys, so I'm here today to show you the comparison between two curriculums. Simply Good and Beautiful Math and Singapore Dimensions Math. So let's get into it. Okay, so first I'm just gonna show you like what you need or what they come with each curriculum. So Simply Good and the Beautiful is easier because it's a lot less. <laughs> so it comes with this book and um, I'll insert a flat lay of it for you guys. All right, so this is a Simply Good and Beautiful. I'll talk a little bit more about this page in a little bit, but if you wanna pause that and read through it, just go through some pages in here. As you can see, it's very pretty. A lot of fun stuff to do. And it also comes with a box of manipulatives. This is the manipulative box that it comes in. It comes with um, dice up to 12, plus, minus, greater than, less than, three cars. I can't remember what they call these, but they're like little peg people. And then counter sticks. I think it's probably 10 of them, or 20. Quite a few, probably more than 10. <laughs> Singapore comes with the teacher's guide. And this is the Singapore Teacher's Guide. Talk a little bit more about this area. Um, I do love that they include every level and they show you what each, so this is KA, you can kind of get an idea to compare with the Good and the Beautiful. And then KB, everything that's included. And it goes through all of the levels, which is really great. And then you can kind of see some pages in here. So like I said, this is just the guide. This is not what the kids are using, but these are pictures of exactly what's going to be in their books, which I like. Right, this is KB, so it comes with KA. So it comes with these books times two. So this is for the second semester. And it also comes with a student textbook and a workbook. Again, this is KB, there's also KA, we already completed it. It's up in storage somewhere. So it comes with six books total and no manipulatives. So I'm just gonna show you guys real quick some of the manipulatives that I have purchased separately that did not come with the Singapore. A couple of these guys, some counters. I'll show you all the counters actually. <laughs> these little counters, um, these are little numbers kind of just get what you can. We use rock counters and then um, linking cubes. This is one of my favorite favorites. I got it recently actually. It's the, um, the rods numbers and then it has plus minus, has multiplication and these are really good for them physically seeing what they're adding up. Tangram and 10 frames. I do really like this one and this brand because they link together so you can do 20 or they also spread apart so you can just do five for like pre-K. So it does come at a big cost for Singapore because you're not only buying the curriculum which is more expensive than the good and the beautiful, you're also buying all of these manipulatives. You, you could probably get by in the younger years without buying it. Um, we've used with my younger son, he's doing um, Singapore pre-K. We've used um, an egg carton with dried pasta for, uh, we obviously cut off two pieces of the egg carton and we use that as his tin frame. Um, tangrams, I suppose you could print out your own shapes and cut them and laminate them and use that. And that could be cheaper. Um, there are ways around it, I guess, but it does make it more fun for them to have physical things and different types. You could use sticks, you could use leaves. We've used all of that stuff before as well. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, I am still gonna utilize a lot of the manipulatives that we have in the Good and the Beautiful Math, 
just because we have them and they like them and we don't have to only stick to the box. Um, so cost breakdown. Simply Good and the Beautiful is um, $50 for the book and the manipulatives. The manipulative box does get bigger. Um, I know the first grade one is about that size. Can you see that? <laughs> that size. So it's a bit bigger. Um, it has the clock on it. And um, yeah, so $50 for that. And it does come with all the manipulatives that you would need. So it comes with all of the basics. Singapore math. Okay, and then Singapore math is $50 for these three. And it's also $50 for the first semester. So it's $100 for the year for kindergarten. I was just looking at the, um, the first grade because I was debating on my son that's finishing this up, whether he would go into Singapore first grade, the dimensions, the homeschool instructor, or Simply Good and the Beautiful, which is $50 still. In Singapore, I wanna say, it was about 130, 140. I'll insert um, a little verbiage on the actual price, but a big difference, three times the price. Simply Good and Beautiful, that's one year, you could get three years out of that. Or in my case, when you just buy the manipulative box of the older years for $27, I think, and then use your uh, tank printer, which is basically free to print it off. It's very inexpensive. Okay, and then for the actual curriculum of it. So I already showed you guys a little bit of a flip through of each of them. And I want to talk a little bit more about these pages that I paused on. Okay, so the big difference between the two curriculums is that Singapore does a mastery approach and Good and the Beautiful does spiral. What's the difference? Mastery, you're going to master one subject or one concept, sorry, before moving on to the next. Whereas with the Good and the Beautiful, you're learning a little bit of it, you're going to something else, you're coming back, you're learning this, you're learning a little bit more of this, kind of like stepping stones adding up, which I do actually like that concept. Um, what I, the main thing that stuck out to me when going through the kindergarten at least curriculum is that they go very quickly into number sentences. I think it's less than like 11, uh, 16. So it's only like page 29 out of 250 pages that they start going straight into number sentences. Whereas with um, Singapore, since I have done a lot of it, I'm really familiar with it they've been we've been doing number bonds for a while before that we were doing a lot of um addition but they didn't know it was addition you know why he has two balls and then he has three balls over here how many does he have all together and they were very specific on using that verbiage first rather than two plus two equals four because like in my last video i think that's a lot about memorization rather than getting that concept solidified before moving on so what i did not like is that it just goes straight into the number sentences in the Simply Good and the Beautiful rather than doing number bonds first. They go into number bonds later, which to me just doesn't really make sense why they would do number sentences and then number bonds when they've already jumped ahead. If that makes sense to you guys. <laughs> At least in the way we're doing it in Singapore, I thought it made more sense. Okay, so that's something that I prefer with Singapore is that it seems like they really get their base levels set, which is what they're known for, getting their base set. You really get it. And then you learn that big concept. Whereas Good and Beautiful kind of jumping around, seems like. Okay, now something that I prefer in the Good and the Beautiful, Singapore will do number bonds. We'll do one concept for so long. Let me get to number bonds, for example. Okay, so we're starting with number bonds and we're going, we have more number bonds and we have more number bonds. Finally, we get to addition. It just is a lot of the exact same repetition for a long time. And my son was, he's very patient, but he was like, more number bonds. So I started um, 
doing every other problem sort of thing, but I don't really want to do that because I don't want him to think that in other things he can skip like in his language arts. We don't really skip anything in there. I don't want him to think that that's how we do school. Um, whereas in the good and the beautiful, it's, it's just not like that. You don't, I, I looked through it and it's more jumping around. And so they don't get bored of things. Kind of like how with our new science that I was talking about in our curriculum video, we're not getting bored of the same. It's jumping around doing different things. And I just think that that is gonna make such a big difference in their, they have very good attention, but definitely other kids I could see that not happening or my younger son. I think this is gonna hold his attention a lot better. I think he would be like another number bond. I'm not doing it. Whereas my older son will kind of just, he's an oldest, so you know, he'll do whatever. Anyway, that was some that's something I prefer in the good and the beautiful is that it doesn't look like it's gonna get boring or too repetitive. Whereas with Singapore Dimensions, it does. Um, overall though, it does look like the same concepts are covered. So that's, that's one thing that I was concerned about was that The Good and the Beautiful wasn't going to give quite as much knowledge as Singapore, but it looks like it will. And what I'm planning on doing is before we get to the number sentences in The Good and the Beautiful, since I'm a little concerned about that, is doing our own number bonds with my second child before we get there, which he already sees my older son do it, so he actually already understands how to do it. But we're gonna solidify that before we get there. After this year, I'm gonna see how it goes. I just really needed something that was a little bit easier to plan. Okay, last thing. I'm gonna show you guys a quick lesson um, overview of each of them, a similar lesson. All right, so I've got these laid out and I'm just gonna go through really quickly. So I'll do the good and the beautiful first. So we've got, I'm gonna do number bonds for both of them. So this is the practice if your child doesn't know this yet. And then we read the black to them. So take the counting stick. So I would go over and I would already have these and I would just grab the, I have um, <laughs> dry shampoo on me. Um, take the counter sticks and it's already in the box, already nice and easy. And this is what we're learning about. You can read through this if you'd like to. And then it has us do addition sentences right here using the physical counters along with the trees, which I like that. And then we're using this big guy too. What's really fun is that they're actually taking the sticks, it says right here, and putting the sticks over here to create the bigger numbers to physically see. I do really like that. Okay, and then Singapore. We're over here, so we're gonna do this number bonds. So we get out their workbook, but you have to do, ahead of, sorry, that is a lot of dry shampoo. <laughs> Uh, um, what you do have to do is read this ahead of time to figure out what activity you're going to do. So I looked and I just found the simple one, which is eight color counters that are double-sided and basically they toss them up and then they say, oh, okay, there's five blue, there's three green, eight all together. And then they can write it in their thing. So we go over here and they do this guy. And this guy. I'll show you the instructions for these up here too. And you do need to get the teacher's guide, by the way. So they do each of these pages. And you can also get linking cubes, which I have, to go along with these. So it's a lot of setup. And then you go down here, and that's the workbook page. So we know that this is the workbook page that we're going to do. So you can kind of see how the Singapore does take a bit more prep work and the amount of books that we were using, it was just a bit much for me at this time because I have two little ones that both need a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. My time, the time in my life right now is just easier to go with one book and so far it looks like they're going to accomplish the same things just about in their, <laughs> um, in their math. So I'm pretty excited to do the good and the beautiful but this was meant to just be a comparison so hopefully it helped you choose which with whichever you go with um personally at this point i do think that we'll probably go back to singapore because i just really love it once they're a little bit older and they can do a little bit more of independent work 
right now having to be one-on-one -on -one with the little ones it's just so easy to already have those manipulatives there exactly what i need and not having to read through five different activities and figure out which one is the best for us um hope that helps let me know down below if you guys have any questions and i can answer those for you